Good evening, Thief River Falls, Minnesota, and the surrounding areas. It's 7.02, and time once again for another edition of the Tuesday Night Experiment here on these fine airwaves of 90.1 FM. Also, a big shout-out to those of you listening in the interweb land, RadioNorthland.org. I'm your host, Glenn Broggett, and I got a whole bunch of fun in the next two hours for you to uh, absorb and enjoy. Yes, it's educating, entertaining, and enlightening. It's a Tuesday night experiment. Only two of us so far tonight. Usually it's a three-man deal, but we're waiting uh, on one of our boys. But why not introduce the guy that did show up on time? Yeah, talk about I the blind up, dog, man. Showed up on time, 702, what you gonna do? What are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna do some uh, talking tonight, some rocking. And t- yeah. Yeah, we got a couple interviews lined up here this evening on the show. Uh, coming up in the 7.30 uh, time slot, around the 7.30, 7.32, 7.35, give or take. We got uh, Mary Forsberg Weiland, Scott Weiland's uh, former wife, who uh, put out a great book. Uh, I had a chance to read it over the weekend called Fall to Pieces, a memoir of drugs, rock and roll, and mental illness. Uh, they just recently put it out in paperback here earlier on in the month of December. Right on. Real revealing look, uh, a real honest look that examined both the ups and downs of her life uh, a life uh, that I actually think that she was uh, more famous before she, uh, Scott hit the, the wave of fame. Well, how so? Yeah, she was. was she... Uh, she was a well-known fashion model. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was a fashion model, and of course, she ended up marrying Scott Weiland. And well, she, figures hot model hooks up with a rock star. Yeah, that guy. never happens uh, ever in the world, does it? Yeah. But she, uh, he's, she's definitely lived uh, both some good times and some bad times, and she's uh, she's lived to tell about it, and she'll be. Uh, Scott us. Weiland gets all the chicks. She'll be visiting us tonight here uh, at the bottom of the hour. And looky, look who uh, <laughs> makes his way into uh, into the studios here at the Broadcast Center at uh, Pioneer 90.1 FM. The one and only Sugar Sean Slauson. Did you guys miss me at all? I mean, I was yeah, trying to make was, a big entrance here with my camera. I was getting ready to call campus security. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> you know, I know it's finals week. But oh, okay. they're still on patrol. I saw I saw them last night when I came in to come do some workout for the station. So beware. Hey, it's all good. Today's a good episode. It's a positive atmosphere, and I think uh, good things are going to happen. A po- now you come in here just a ray of sunshine. Is this just? <laughs> it's kind of like a distraction, so we don't. We're going to forget that you were late. Oh, okay. Well, you know that's why I say it's a positive episode. Yeah. You must look like you just came in from uh, <laughs> your. your, your, your I uh, know. I'm just trying to deflect here. Can't be tardy for the party. Uh-huh. Yeah, but you're two minutes late. <laughs> yeah. uh, now you look like you just came in from a, another day of uh, earning that pay. Some dollar dollar <laughs> bills going around there, yeah, buddy. I'm, I'm wearing my uh, Hugo's uniform today because oh. I just got done work with work not too long ago. So I just came here and I was going to change and look all nice and cute for everybody, but you know. Why well, do that? It's radio. Yeah, Who cares? we don't have a webcam yeah, in here. Right. Right. The, well, only, the only camera we have is your Scorsese. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it, yeah. So what's new in the land of Sugar Sean Slauson? Oh, well, not much. Uh, went, to, went to Grand Forks here on Friday and had a great day. Oh, you had a great day. Did you go uh, fly solo or did you take a nice lady with you? Well, or what's I, the story, had, my friend? I had a friend with, you know, not a female friend, but, you know, a guy friend that I've been friends well, with. Well, you, uh, you could have dressed him up. Yeah, put, yeah. A, put, a, yeah. put a wig on him or just yeah. put a, give him a pink cardigan to wear or something. Uh, yeah. Pre- pretend road trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what did, you, what did you do down in uh, the big old town of Grand well, Forks? Did, did, uh, some, uh, did some Christmas shopping. Some Christmas shopping. And went and saw the Chronicles of Narnia movie. Oh, wow. Were you having trouble sleeping? Uh, <laughs> no, no, it, it, it was good. It, you know, I, I have not seen the first two, but my friend Johnny said... You haven't seen the first two? Why do you go no, the third like one? that? <laughs> He he can my friend John convinced me that you gotta see this one because I want to see Unstoppable because it was playing over there. But he said, you "Well, you can just it. go to town and see that this week." I here. know, but you know, he convinced me to say, "Oh, you gotta go see Chronicles." Did, of did he? Did so, he kind of? Yeah, did he kind of want? He was angling with you there, buddy. <laughs> well, he, did, he didn't want to go by himself, you know. And I was just like, "Well, okay, well, I'll go with you." Did you guys hold hands too in the theater? Well, we share took, popcorn. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We, <laughs> did you get? <laughs> did they check your ID? Me. Well, we got to see it in 3D, you know. Oh, but that's wow. Does I, that actually work? Yeah. I, you actually be amazed. It's not the original red, blue. Slap him on the old, back of the head. We'll kill you. The old 50s and 60s uh, 3D. This is like the new technology of 3D. This is pretty pretty damn good. In the post-Avatar age here, everything uh, has come up 3D. <laughs> 
You know, maybe I, our show will be in 3D. I, I don't. don't I'm not really. Up, I'm not really into that whole I'm, 3D I'm, thing. I'm happy in the 2D right now. Yeah. The oh, left yeah. and right. Yeah, left and right works for us. I don't think we're going to work on 3D. That just shows way too many of our already obvious flaws. And if it even hook it up to a 5.1 digital surround sound, yeah. uh, we'll still sound hip. Oh yeah, absolutely. So you went and saw that movie. See, I went to, I went to Grand Forks uh, Friday night, and uh, well, me and me and the lady went out. You know, did a little our did a little shopping thing, did a little dinner thing, sure. and we caught uh, the Fighter uh, with Mark Wahlberg and Christian Bale, a movie that's been uh, garnering a lot of uh, critical attention and raves here in the last month, month and a half. And I have to say, I actually agree with critics on this. It was a really good movie, a real gritty movie. I think Christian Bale. When it comes time to hand out the awards here at the end of the year and into 2011, has definitely got a legitimate shot at uh, winning a whole bunch of them. He he goes above and beyond. He he is definitely uh, keeping the spirit of the method actor alive. Uh, he lost a bunch of weight for it to play the role of Mark Wahlberg's uh, brother, who was the former boxer who fell on down on his luck, and he he was really Mark really good. Wahlberg, yeah, that's uh... yeah, that that's the uh, you remember know, the no, rocker. <laughs> now, how, how could you call Marky Mark and a funky the bunch rock, of rock, even in the same paragraph? I think he was going for that movie that, uh, you know, that was the ripoff of the Judas Priest thing, you know, where the, the guy, the fan replaced Rob Halford. Oh, they, they okay. Kind of, they kind of turned that into a movie here yeah. uh, about seven, eight years ago with Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's got eating issues. Uh, a lot of them do. Uh, did you get, uh, have a chance to check out the uh, the big Vikings game then uh, last night? Uh, the outdoor experiment over at uh, ACF Field. There's a couple of plays <laughs> that looked like they were doing the slip and slide type thing, you know, right on the field, man. That guy was just like, whoa, it, it got sliding. Pretty, it got pretty white at the end, that's for sure. Well, yeah, the running game, yeah, definitely. You watch these guys, they definitely got some extra yards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you watch them slip around. I mean, it definitely, the field helped some stats but it seemed like uh you know the the fans were really optimistic going out the shoot they had grandpa Favre out there taking snaps <laughs> he moved the ball up, up the field oh people were saying well here we go here we go he, he gets, suffered a concussion too yeah, right he got smoked right in a noggin <laughs> i mean he was barely even ready from uh you know a couple of weeks ago where he uh, suffered uh, the banged up shoulder against buffalo and and then they give it to Joe Webb. Uh, well, he is, in essence, our young third-string quarterback, so you really can't expect too much out of him. The guy can run. Well, yeah, that's the one thing. He had a fan- yeah. he busted off a fantastic run, but I think he's just not ready to, to compete in the level here. Uh, not ready of, for of prime NFL- time yet? No, of an NFL starting quarterback right now. But that doesn't mean he, he doesn't show any promise. But the thing was, he was drafted as wide receiver. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a lot of them out there. Pittsburgh has a bunch of uh, wide receivers that could be quarterback. But now we have a quarterback who could be a wide receiver in Minnesota. So Leslie Frazier, he's digging at the bottom of the barrel? Well, I think that that's where he found uh, their backup quarterback, uh, Patrick Ramsey, here uh, last week just to fill a roster spot. That guy yep. hadn't taken a snap in, what, almost two years? Yeah, it, it's, 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 it's just a sad year for the Vikings. Uh, you know, it, the, 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 yeah, they got the opposite end of the karma stick. Yeah, <laughs> they, had, they, had, they had things way too easy, and then last last year it started to kind of show up uh, in the NFC Championship game, you know, where it all kind of went south on them. Uh, yeah, anyway. a play away from the Super Bowl. Yeah, but now now it's uh, you know it, it, the clock struck twelve. Well, you got to realize we uh, whooped a bunch of ass last year in the season. So NFL for sure is going to give the Vikings a tougher schedule this year. Well, yeah, that's kind of just the natural progression yeah. of things in the league too. So, yeah, Vikings. Uh, Frazier, he'll be coming back next year. And- I, I think so. Give him uh, the proper tools. Get all these guys healthy again. There might be something here with him, and I think he's most deservedly earned his spot uh, to be a head coach in the NFL. He's uh, come a long way since that Super Bowl shuffle. Yeah, I think didn't he get hurt in his career? He ended in that Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a bad deal. At least you got the ring, but I mean, unfortunate. But. He kind of looks like Beetlejuice from the Howard Stern show. Yeah, that, that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree with you on that. I, 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 I just uh, nice hurts me now. Guy. I was like, you know, who does that Leslie Frazier look like? Oh yeah, Beetlejuice as bad as can. <laughs> <laughs> we got some news here to talk about. Don't forget, by on the hour, I'm going to try to get a hold of Mary Forsberg Weiland to talk about her uh, her memoir, Fall the Pieces, that just came out here uh, in paperback form. It, it was out earlier uh, this year, at the end of last year, actually, but it, it's received the paperback uh, 
thing here, paperback distinction. It's a great book. Uh, we got some music, or not, entertainment news. Let's go with entertainment and music. Uh, actor and comedian Tracy Morgan is recovering from a kidney transplant undergone earlier this month, his publicist said in a statement Monday. Morgan, 42, will miss at least two episodes of the television show 30 Rock, in which he co-stars with Tina Fey and Alec Baldwin and plays uh, an exaggerated caricature of his own days on Saturday Night Live. Uh, his successful transplant occurred around December 10th. Uh, so uh, Tracy Morgan recovering from a kidney surgery. Got more on this story. Tracy is doing well and taking some much-needed time to recover after the surgery, said the statement. He is looking forward to going back to work after the holidays. Morgan was diagnosed with diabetes nearly 15 years ago, but said uh, in his first 30 Rock season, he did not take the disease seriously. And that can mean a lot of trouble, uh, you know, especially with dealing with diabetes and not paying attention to it. The episodes Morgan uh, will miss are due to air in March. Yeah, I just had a chance to see Tracy here uh, yeah. in the middle of November. Yeah, he looked fine on stage. Oh, he looked good. He looked ready to go. He looked a little cold. That was the day of the big ah. storm, the big storms here uh, earlier in the month of November. But he, he didn't appear to show any ill side effects. Uh, but you maybe know. he likes to hit that dessert bar a little bit. Uh. I think he was on his. Uh, I think he was st- shying away from the desserts. I think he was probably worried about this surgery. But he put on a dynamite show. Yeah. It, it's it's good to know that uh, the surgery went successful. He's he's definitely one of the funnier people on television these days. We go from Tracy Morgan to Amy Winehouse. You remember her? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> one of the feel good songs of 07. Oh yeah. Well, she sparked some fresh fears for her health. No, uh, not this gal. After she slurred and stumbled her way through a comeback concert in Russia over the weekend. Apparently the Rushkies love Amy Winehouse. Still. The re- yeah, the rehab hitmaker flew out to Moscow to uh, play her first official gig for more than two years after taking time out to battle her drinking and drug demons. The British singer was reportedly back to full health and ready to relaunch her career with a series of shows. But reports in Russia suggest she was drunkenly swaying, you get this, slurring her words during the performance after downing, no, not taking a couple baby sips, downing a bottle of whiskey backstage. <laughs> well, you know, they provide that for the stars. So she was uh, she getting tuned up. Ten. Be complimentary. Say well, thank you. <laughs> well, do you think that they would kind of watch out for her, knowing that she's had to deal with these problems and it's kind of derailed her career since this first album came out? Well, I don't know. Uh, what damage can be done? You know, it's uh, it's like putting gas in a car you already wrecked. <laughs> well, you know, she's going to stick around and what, she's just going to be a one-hit wonder here. I, I don't know. She's a uh, she's like Lady Gaga. Come on now. Yeah. In bubblegum land. Bubblegum. Oh, yeah. wow. Hey, uh, Fergie, she's down in Fargo. Oh, really? Did you know that? Fargo. No, I did not know that. Uh, her hubby or whatever. Oh, the guy that can't stop texting when he's not supposed to on an airplane, Josh Jamal? Yeah, he's got family in Fargo, so they're in Fargo visiting over the holidays. <laughs> you got so. the uh, blind dog spies out in Fargo? Uh, yeah, I got, I got friends that work at TMZ. <laughs> I, I got the inside scoop. Yeah, okay. No, actually, it was Robin Hubner. <laughs> <laughs> well, is she sitting around looking through bushes in the wind, into the windows or something? <laughs> She's kind of old to be doing that. I thought she already had a secure gig uh, doing the anchor uh, for KVLY <laughs> yeah. KX4 here. She'd be pretty stealthy, you know. Uh, she used to be a gymnast, so she could uh, maneuver her way around spying. Kind of <laughs> get- like Stenchu. Stealth assassin. What was she? What was she standing on uh, Hutch Johnson's shoulders as they were trying to look into this? Oh, God. I miss the weather giant. Bring him back. Yeah. I don't think Hutch is a real stumpy one though. He looks like he's a little. He, he's not as full uh, around as uh, old too tall. But well, never... I, I noticed they kind of had him tame down on some of his dorky comments. <laughs> you know, to segue back to the news. <laughs> That's like. The other week, he brought in a bunch of snow on the counter, and he started throwing it at Robin. <laughs> Just always smiling all the time. And right? these are people that get paid a lot of money to do yeah. what, the, what they do. What, to show up there for four hours each day? That's, you know, oh, I think I want my teleprompter. Uh, there's my script. Yeah, blah. Basically, they have to know how to read. And then the whole meteorology thing, I, I, I'm still... <laughs> I'm still up there on that. Well, uh, Winehouse will be paid $450,000 for the Russian concert and a series of gigs in Brazil next month. That's according to my favorite tabloid, the purest tabloid on the planet, Britain's The Sun. 
She could get some Brazil nuts. <laughs> Do you think they just call nuts over there? I really don't know about that. <laughs> well, that's just a random, random question. We're just, I'm just, well, trying, to, I'm, I'm I'm trying, just to... trying to think of that country, man. I, I know. I'm just trying to make it through this show because, you know... We're going to have a couple of weeks off here. I've decided we're going to do the two weeks off. We're going to do a couple best of shows. I was just going to reward you with that because you've, you've both done such wonderful work. Nice. With I could oh, wow. sneak over to Grand Forks maybe. Yeah. You know, you got a couple Tuesdays off, and I, 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 that was my reward. But after that comment, I think we should work every day. I'll be loitering right down by the river, right by Kitson Avenue over there. So you know where to find it. Yeah. It's that little shop right across from that candy store place. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. That's where he'd be hanging. I got Slosser one. Knows what I'm talking about, right? I, I think I do. He's well, got a. Yeah, I think it, I it's do. not a Barnes and Noble, buddy. Yeah, oh, he's uh, definitely uh, into it's that. Playing as brown as a rapper. Well, you know well, what? Yeah, yeah. Jeez, <laughs> we're on the same frequency. Oh, I, yeah. For the first time uh, in, in our show's short history, you two have actually <laughs> harmonized uh, with your I thoughts. know how this guy Whoa. thinks now. After, you know, it's been a few episodes, but I know how he thinks. So. Oh, that's. that is, <laughs> Which reminds more. me, I got to call back there and see how Patches is doing. <laughs> well, you know what? We got some news here uh, concerning uh, one of Sean's favorites. Share. Oh, yeah. My top favorite. Yeah. <laughs> what, did she get a new bidet installed or something? <laughs> no, that was last week. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cher regretted wearing her infamous black body stocking at MTV Video Music Awards back in September because she felt uncomfortable when she was asked to pose for a picture with baby Justin Bieber. Get over here. Stand next to Grandma, who's underdressed here. <laughs> the veteran singer stunned guests at the award show in Los Angeles by donning the revealing outfit from her video, If I Could Turn Back Time, for presenting duties at the ceremony. And the star admits so she felt a little concerned about her skin-tight attire when event organizers pushed teenage pop star Bieber in her direction for a photo op. Well, blame them for throwing, her in, throwing him in her direction. Get over here. Who is that scary monster? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just share. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but, you know, Cher, Cher actually saw that this was not exactly the most appropriate thing. Oh, that's good. You know, give her marks for that. I yeah. mean, you got to say that, you know, she's actually thinking with a clear head. I mean, a lot of these celebrities will go for any sort of photo op, especially at, at Cher's point in her career, you know, trying to grab on to anything youthful. Wasn't just, there another photo op that Justin Bieber had a lot too long ago that was uh, controversial with, uh, I think, Lady, was it Lady Gaga or somebody? Well, that's nothing. Lady oh, Gaga. Oh, Lady that's, Gaga. Uh, that's, yeah, that's so, pretty. So that's two okay, weeks then. ago. Bro. Yeah, that's tame fair, <laughs> oh, okay. buddy. I, I wasn't sure. You got to get you, you got to get those tabloids uh, up, updated a little quicker there in Hugo's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the billboard seems to be kind of empty sometimes. You know? uh, <laughs> you're still talking about Bruce Willis and Demi Moore's divorce. In this <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm still calling him Bruno. I don't know. <laughs> well, she tells UK host, Cher tells UK host uh, Graham Norton, I thought, I'll do myself in a decade, and that body stocking was the closest thing I had. Oh. And then someone said, will you take a picture with Justin Bieber? And I said, sure. What's a Justin Bieber? No, Not knowing who he was. <laughs> not knowing who he was. And then this child who came up to here, she points to her chest, and I felt like I should cover up before I take a picture with this baby. You know, to, to, to retro back to last week's episode, that sounds exactly like your Billy Ray Cyrus voice. <laughs> it kind of does. Now Billy, Ra Bill, Billy Ray's more like this. I reckon. Well, He's got to give up his mansion now. I think him and his wife are going through a little divorce. Yeah, they're having some <laughs> tough times, him and Tish. I mean, we, uh, you know, with the holidays and stuff, if we would have been a little quicker on the draw, we would have been able to get our fundraising efforts together. And uh, had a telephone fundraiser for Billy Ray and, and, you know, helping him get through his divorce with, you know, from his estranged wife, Tish. We would have been helped to raise some money for the Billy Ray Defense Fund. Jeez. You know, come on. Like he needs that much space to live in. How many gold records do you think he has? A lot. Achy, breaky heart, just one. You yeah, know, maybe he's on. got a single for It Could Have Been Me. Yeah. <laughs> That was the... And, and you can't forget yeah. Trail of Tears. Come on, that's probably the greatest song. Yeah. What? Trail. Nobody's even heard of that Trail one. That probably tears. sank like a uh, stone. That whole album was just Is that magic. the one you get whiskeyed up to every Friday? I love that. Sean's uh, like, sorry, Sean's like cr crank that up. I like it's that a biker, song. It's a biker tune, you know? It's a biker tune. You're a huffy 10-speed <laughs> sort of guy. Yeah, jeez. Yeah. 
Don't try to fool the I public. Mean, this like is theater a, of the mind, but this is ridiculous. It's like a bike or two. It's, it's, a, it's a theme for Sturgis rallies, motorcycle rallies. Because oh, you know, Sugar yeah, Sean has yeah. oh, Sugar Sean has gone to so many biker rallies uh, yes, throughout I, the area, not I, just Sturgis. I have been to Sturgis a few times. Mm, in my man, life, yeah. were you in the were you in the little uh, sidecar then? When WCW was here <laughs> for the pay per view in 1997, I was there. Yeah. You went to a WCW pay per view. Uh, Road Wild in 1997. That must have been at Buffalo Chip Campground. Steve Michael, Mc, uh, Steve Michael, Steve McMahon. You get all starstruck <laughs> by that. Yeah. You met some old jobber, and yeah, you thought you were having yeah. yourself a he good was, old time. He was a horseman. Come on, love. <laughs> He's about the biggest joke of a professional wrestler there was. The original commentator for uh, Nitro. Look at this, Cliff Clavin over here <laughs> with the facts. Hey, it's not pander, but what the heck? Maybe we should plant your butt at a bar, and you could sit <laughs> and uh, somebody you can play. Well, go. I'll, I'll play a few songs on the jukebox, <laughs> abandon you, and then let you talk to the locals. As long as they serve burgers there, that's fine. Oh God. <laughs> Scooters, there you go. We'll, uh, we'll hit that one. Right? Later on in the 8 o'clock hour, Sugar Sean's got a special <laughs> DVD segment for us because last week's went by so well. Oh, yeah, we even got a couple callers. That might happen again, maybe. maybe yeah, not. I wouldn't I wouldn't know. hold your breath. Did you watch <laughs> Santa Paws then or what? Uh, I, I did not watch that one. But, <laughs> but, 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 but. You, you pander to the crowd, but then you don't take their suggestions to heart. <laughs> well, it was $20 for the movie for Grand Couldn't Island. you find that on 20 Netflix? 20 bucks! Yeah, 20 bucks. Well, what are you looking at, ripoff.com? We're going to be talking about another movie that, uh, well, let's just say I have a surprise for, for oh, you. Guys, you know what? That's a lot of pressure that you're putting uh, on, <laughs> undue pressure that you're putting on well, yourself. Well, you might see me in a different light. Maybe you won't, but we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll is, see that, uh, is that top Leonard Maltin's movie review of the week? You know who <laughs> well, that guy is, yeah, right? I know who Leonard Maltin is, yeah. Is he still on NBC? I think he's on the uh, Reels uh, channel now. Real, yeah, oh, Reels. yeah. Gene channel. Shallot was the NBC guy. He retired. <laughs> I had a chance to see that channel the other day. Yeah. yeah was, it real, was it Reelsly bad? <laughs> <laughs> it was Reels bad. Well, they show a lot of good movies on there. It's like, almost like that do-it-yourself channel. It's almost like the this. That Vanilla Ice is on there, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. He's got some sort of show. Yeah. Like, what's he What's he doing now? Like real estate or what is it? Yeah. <laughs> that, he just shows how to crash your career quick and get duffed up by Suge Knight. <laughs> wow. He's like, that didn't happen. Yeah, it did. that didn't. He, was going, he went back and forth on that. So Me many dangling times. from that hotel room balcony. That never happened. <laughs> and that, like, the worst thing about that was his uh, his gangster rap career. What about his and his rap metal career. What about his, his by mixtape? What about his appearance on Teen Mutant Ninja Turtles Part Two? You know, Secret of the Ooze. What about that? You know, you watch the dumbest movies. I swear to God. Well, like you didn't see that movie. You I didn't want. I didn't probably have it on Blu-ray. Too, I don't probably. own none. <laughs> Of that junk, <laughs> I throw that away. And if I had it, I'd put it in the burn pit. Yeah, I love humor. I tell you. Humor, humor, humor. You'll love this TV, hey? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they got tons of that crap on there. Yeah, oh, it's just I like, love it. This is just like real. It's pretty much the opposite. Pretty much. This except. throws any and all television, any movie on it's there, and like, just lets you watch it. <laughs> yeah. It's all MGM based too. If you pay attention to that. Yeah, they had yeah. Ble- uh, beach blanket. Party, whatever on there. Yeah, they also had uh, what movie was that? Uh, I'm gonna get you a sucker. See, there you go. There, there, there's at least a good one out of that. Yeah. Uh, and Elvira, she's on there on yeah, the weekends. Has, yeah, she has a show over there. Yeah. Right? yeah. I dig it. Elvira, boy. we're all nerds, aren't we? You can Is grab her by thinking? the back of the neck with all that pulled skin from her face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She looks pretty pale still. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, but she's hotter than heck, you know. I mean, you would, you would. Never mind. I'm yeah, not even look, going to that there's the old, the old, the old cougar hunt over there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys. Sean Schlossen. We the, talked the about cougar, cougar last hunter. week. And, you the know, cougar hunter. <laughs> oh man. Hey, I pay attention to our show, so of course. Look well, well, good because you're because he, you're here. Because I record the stream, so it's like he sits and listens you know? to it. And, uh, goes through it again. Goes through it like the Zabruder film. You'll be happy now because you know, on he probably YouTube, edits us out on YouTube now. Uh, well, I, I'm a what you call like a partner now. Kind you're of. a gold subscriber. So every episode or every uh, file that I record or whatever is in one file now. Last week's episode <sighs> ran an hour and forty five minutes and nine seconds. Normally it'd be split in many different parts, but now it's all in one. Do you have like every episode on there, or what? Well, up to besides the first one. 
besides the pilot. You know, but we'll call that the, the lost episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sugar Sean did not have that one. Yeah, but the other four I do. All right, gang, we're going to take a <laughs> little break, do some words, and play a couple tracks. One, uh, hopefully, we can get the Mighty Mighty Bonstones in here this half hour as well. It's the latest from Bad Religion, new single from Descent of Man called Cyanide, and that's on the way. Here, 90.1, KSRQ, Thief River Falls, Grand Forks, a service of Northland Community and Technical College. Welcome back once again to the Tuesday Night Experiment on Pioneer 90.1 FM. It's about 7.32 here on this uh, Tuesday night, and I have a, a, a guest, yes, a telephone guest on the phone this week. Uh, she's an author of a, of a book I just had the chance to read over the weekend. Uh, it's a, a fantastic memoir called Fall to Pieces, a memoir of drugs, rock and roll, and mental illness. Uh, it's now available on in paperback form here. It became available in paperback form here earlier this month. It's a great story that documents uh, the life of my guest on the phone uh, she's definitely lived it all she's a mother she's a model she was a rock star wife she's a bipolar disorder dis- survivor recovering drug addict and now a successful author she's done it all and she's here to share uh, with us her story uh, welcome uh, to the Tuesday Night Experiment Mary Forsberg Wyland hello there hi how are you oh it's great uh, like we were talking about earlier uh, up here in the Northland we're uh, we're shoveling out of another another storm. Uh, we we just can't seem to shake these storms as we moved into November and December. We're getting it a little too early. Well, yeah, at least it belongs snow where you are because here in LA, people are just having a meltdown over the fact that it's raining. We don't know what to do. How do we dress? <laughs> How do we drive? It, it's pretty pitiful. <laughs> oh, so it's kind of like uh, the uh, our, like you said, our equivalent of all this snow you're getting with rain. It's just. Uh, what what to do? What to do? Well, how about we just sit and talk about your book? Yeah, that's Thank what we that's you. what we came to do here tonight. <laughs> uh, yeah, Follow the pieces, uh, a, a book, a really great uh, memoir, a real honest uh, memoir. Uh, now out in paperback form, uh, it, it reveals. Uh, it says in here in your little press release the extreme highs and lows of your life with refreshing candor and unflinching detail, and it tells beautifully the story of your life, including your relationship with uh, ex husband. Stone Temple Pilots and former Velvet Revolver frontman Scott Weiland. And first of all, I, let me be the first to say uh, amongst us here tonight at the Tuesday Night Experiment that I thoroughly enjoyed your book. Uh, it, there was just so many ups and downs in it, but all the way I was uh, thoroughly entertained and actually quite inspired by your story. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Oh. Uh, yeah, and I'm glad it's on paperback now because the first round was pretty pricey and, and I'm hoping more people will have a chance now to read it. Okay, so uh, what was the, what's the reaction been like since the initial release of Fall to Pieces as, as far as what kind of sort of feedback have you been getting as a result of this book? Uh, yeah, the feedback has been overwhelmingly amazing. I, I, I still I, I can't believe I can't believe the feedback <laughs> I've received. I'm so grateful for it. It's really humbling um, to just get email after email after email from people that uh, share with me that they were able to relate with my story and they too had been struggling and were now inspired to um, not give up and, and seek the treatment that they were that they needed and it's just it's amazing. And I'm really grateful for it. And it, like I said, it's it's a great book and it's a, a well written book too with a story that your story is so very easy to follow. Now uh, we're, let's talk about what got you uh, into to write, putting your story uh, on onto paper here and getting this book out. What was the what inspired you to to, to write your your memoir? I had once I had my diagnosis, I started reading as much as I could on bipolar. Uh, you know, it's a really that word is really scary. Uh, mental illness in general is is not something that everybody really has that much knowledge on, and so it sounds really frightening. And and I thought the same. And so I started reading and reading and reading. And uh, I didn't really find my story so much in a lot of the books I was reading. Uh, a lot of these stories were uh, people who had really extreme mania. And the majority of uh, of my life it was really just a lot of depression. Yeah. And so I never, I was misdiagnosed many times with just depression. And uh, I was hoping maybe somebody else could read my story and and they might see themselves and seek out some treatment. And, and hopefully if that was their situation, they might be able to get better too. 
Mm-hmm. And that's a great, great thing to the message to spread too. Uh, we, now we're going to go back now to go back into the beginning of your life because you've done a lot too. You're not, you know, you, I saw the book. I'm thinking, well, she was married to Scott Weiland. Uh, I didn't know too much about your story and getting into your book. I got to really realize and find out a lot about your life and uh, you, the, the, with the modeling and all of that. But let's start off uh, growing up. Now, a lot of this uh, deals with your family and, and the issues uh, growing up too. I mean, to read about you, and it, it, this could be a good book, you know, for girls that are growing up and going through awkward stages too. I mean, you, 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 when I was reading it, it, you're not, it didn't sound like you had this fairy tale life. You just became a model and a rock star wife and all of that. You know, it's, it's a bare bones sort of living. Yeah. Well, it started out, um, financially challenged mm-hmm. and I had really young parents. They were 18 and 19 when I was born. So they didn't have the greatest, uh, knowledge on how it, how you raise, how you raise children. They ended up doing really the best they could, and, and I'm really grateful for the job that they did. But um, it's, it, it really it definitely falls under kind of fairy tales, uh, you know, going from such, I don't know, extreme lows mm-hmm. to really amazing and privileged situations. Mm-hmm. And I was reading, I, I kind of related to a, a little part of your story when you were a kid. Uh, for one Christmas, you, you received a, a, one of those little port, a portable phonograph record players. Oh my God! I I found one on eBay that's exactly the same. I had to have it. It was the greatest gift oh, until get, I had children that I've ever received. Oh, get out of here! I because I, I related to that because I remember getting one around uh, around the same age and uh, lugging around records. My records of choice when I was a kid. Well, my poor brothers and sisters who were older than me. I would take their Kiss records. I would take their Beatles records. I'd take their Bee Gees records. I'd be walking around playing these records, singing along to it. I mean, I didn't. Have, I, I played with toys, but I, that was probably the, the the one thing that I played with more than any of my toys was just my the music, and that's just something that's kind of gone on through my life. It's just the power of music and how it can start at such a young age. Yeah, I, I owe so much of my existence to music. Even just waking up in the morning, because I'm not really a morning person. I I need a lot of music to, you know, bounce me out of bed. But that was for me. That that those records really changed me. I don't know what I would have done without music, and I didn't really have very many toys to play with other than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're lucky you had uh, older siblings, so they could pass down good music. I had to uh, figure out good music over the years. I started out with uh, Pac-Man Fever. Oh, uh, I remember that. Really 45. not qualify for Hall of Fame right there. But, no, but it's <laughs> memories. It's memories. It triggers it something. Mm-hmm. And now let's talk about how you got involved with, with modeling, uh, too. Uh, you got into, into the modeling thing at a pr- rather young age. Yeah, I was um, kind of a fluke and didn't really have any intentions of it taking off. I went to uh, modeling school, which is not generally something that catapults uh, girls onto the covers of magazines. <laughs> but um, it was just fun for me, and I, I, I liked the idea of learning etiquette and whatnot. I thought, well, this could be beneficial in the future i had no intention of actually becoming a model Mm -hmm. um and i entered a 17 magazine contest and was one of their finalists and flew out to new york and just took off from there it was really unexpected and with the modeling allowed you some some freedoms and you saw a lot of places too and uh you definitely opened it up uh, your avenue of a of a new career and you, you definitely started to get some some major work it seemed like uh at a pretty decent clip there at a, at a young age in your teens. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I did pretty good. I'm, I'm definitely not going to complain about it. Uh, <laughs> certainly not a supermodel. Sometimes uh, people will throw that uh, title, they'll attach that to my name. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> working, uh, <laughs> making money, doing well, having a good time, but not, <laughs> not that. <laughs> and you definitely uh, were involved with some people who ended up becoming, uh, you know, big models and actresses and all that. You I mean you worked with some. Some pretty uh, talented late girls at the time, and who ended up uh, getting into bigger careers and, and parlaying uh, the modeling into other st- avenues too. Yeah, yeah, no, I, well, you know, you you moved to LA. I moved here when I was sixteen, and you're pretty much not. It's probably it's pretty much not possible to not meet people that are going <laughs> to go on to be successful here. So that wasn't uh, certainly wasn't me seeking out that lifestyle, but just town is really uh they're everywhere (laughs) (laughs) 
And, you know, through your modeling, too, uh, getting, you know, you're at this young age, you're, you're in your, mil, your mid to late teens. Uh, well, that's kind of where another part of your life story sort of opening up. Can you tell us uh, how you ended up with this, this, uh, this singer, this musician, uh, this, this Mr. Wyland, Scott Wyland? Let's let, uh, I want to let the listeners know the story because it, it's kind of a real charming story when it's starting it out is, here. It's, it's very sweet. He's, you know, I met him when I was 16, so I, I uh, file him under uh, Teenage Sweethearts. And uh, he was hired to be my driver to drive me on uh, auditions and take me to jobs because I had just turned 16 and didn't have my license yet. And he came in to my agency and I met him and, and I knew, I don't even know if I spoke a word to him and I, I knew I would marry him. <laughs> <laughs> and just, you know, a lot of ups and downs, a really, really a lot of downs. Um, <laughs> but it's so much love so much love there and and even now we're no longer together but i don't think i could ever lose lose appreciation for everything that we had Mm -hmm. and and those were the days too before uh, he 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 became so famous with stone temple pilots they weren't even the stone temple pilots when you guys uh, were no they were were mighty joe young at the time yeah, and, and talk about being uh, involved, being at the right place at the right time for the, that part of, of music history, especially a lot of the great acts that came out of the 1990s alternative rock scene. I mean, that was my, you know, I grew up with that music, I, I think, fondly back on those days and all of that great music. And you got to kind of be uh, you know, indirectly kind of a part of that whole that whole scene. And that's, that, that's another great part of the book. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I'm really grateful for that time and all the experiences that I had and Having the opportunity to be so close to that scene, um, you know, it's completely come back now. The whole grunge scene is is here again, and I don't think we'll. I don't think it'll. I think it'll always come back. And it was really, really grateful that I was the age that I was uh, when that whole scene exploded because it's great soundtrack for your youth you know no i can totally agree with you just uh being a listener and a fan of that 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 mm-hmm. great great sound and uh you know i was reading too it's like you know the story between you and scott you know you met up and stuff and you kind of got involved and you know it kind of took a detour there for a little bit when you know i'm reading this and it sounds like everything's going so well and all of a sudden you find out he's married he ends up getting yeah. married i mean that's just it that feels like such a gut devastating pop. I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't fathom the the feeling uh, that must have went through you and that this how, how sore your heart must have felt because you, like you said, this was kind of the beginning of some of a real feelings of love and affection for him, mm-hmm. and, and, and then you find out, well, he got married. That's just boom. Yeah, that that one took me down for a while, <laughs> but you know, I can look at it now, and and as much as I didn't at the time think that I could ever um, find anything positive in that. When we did finally, um, when we were finally able to be together, it was probably, I was probably much more appreciative of it than I would have been if things would have just fallen into place automatically from day one. Yeah, it's definitely uh, 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 not the, the straight and easy road. And uh, with it, with your relationship to, uh, you know, a lot of things started happening and developing, especially when it came to the issue of, of substances too. Uh, when did the drugs sort of start becoming an issue for uh, both, you know, Scott and yourself? I kind of got on that train uh, years before I did. Mm-hmm. I don't really necessarily want to speak on his behalf for mm-hmm. how that whole thing went down for him. But um, for me, it was, I think I was 23, and I had already been drinking uh, in an unhealthy fashion and using drugs here and there. Uh, but once we, once we really got together, uh, there was just a day when I, I wanted to try heroin. I just wanted to know. And certainly didn't believe that you could try it once and get hooked. And uh, I am the poster child for that saying, because it really only took me one time. Mm-hmm. And we, I, well, both of us and, and then myself on my own had a, really a devastating year. Mm-hmm. Very devastating. It was really difficult for me to come back from that. It took seven rehabs and a whole lot of work to climb my way out of that. And just, the, the, I mean, reading about the, the many attempts, but then, what what finally what finally got you to the point where it's like I'm going to clean up this 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 is it this is this is that final moment I mean I've been through the rehabs multiple times uh-huh. nothing's been taking what what was that when was that just that final moment there that, that really kind of got you on the on the track to where you were as far as getting rid of and shaking the the, the drug habit 
Well, uh, Scott and I kind of refer to it as a black and white intervention. He uh, was on probation and broke his pro- broke his probation um, with a dirty drug test, and he was sentenced to a year uh, jail time. He pulled himself together and and went into jail sober. I'm not sure how long he he had at the time. I think maybe a couple months. And I was out on my own, and I could not pull it together. I really didn't think it was something I'd continue without him. And uh, I kept running. And I don't know, he'd been in there for a few months, and he found out that I was still using and basically gave me an ultimatum, either if you want to be with me, I don't plan on having that lifestyle anymore. You need to pull it together, and you need to go to treatment. So in a sense, it was um, it was somewhat forced on me. Mm-hmm. But I'm really grateful that it was. It doesn't always, uh, you don't always have to hit bottom on your own and decide you need to get better. Sometimes um, being pushed into it is, is what will work. And I really wanted to have children. I, I of course, didn't want to lose him, but I, I really wanted to have children. And it's quite obvious that um, using drugs is not a good match for uh, motherhood. So No, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. And yeah, uh, and with it, you know, you're cleaned up. You got married, and then the baby started started oh, to yes. happen. Oh uh, yeah, right away. <laughs> <laughs> no, what was that like? I mean, to go from you know you got you know, through all of the, uh, the the drug abyss, and now all of a sudden you know you, you're cleaning yourself up, and now you're going through a whole different avenue altogether. Parenthood. Now that's the mother of all responsibilities. It sure is. It never ends. It, ne- it really <laughs> never ends. <laughs> According to my mother, even with me at 35, she's don't think it's ever going to end. It's a lot of work. Oh, and I love the story uh, about uh, the birth of your your, your first child. Uh, oh yeah, Scott doesn't. <laughs> I think Scott's upset with me on that one. I think that, that's the one area that he's like, really? Did you have to write that? <laughs> 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 Did you have to do that? But it's both my children's births were were uh, different. <laughs> <laughs> They came out healthy, though. That's what matters. Oh, exactly, and you know, and it's it's just those. It's just such a wonderful thing. I've yet to have them, but I've I've seen enough uh, through my brothers and sisters uh, how much you can really change, and how much that whole thing just opens it up. Where you just got to say say goodbye to certain things because you're not going to have a chance to because to to do certain things because the the, the thing is the number one responsibility is developing that child and taking care. Oh yeah, of it. I think I've frightened my siblings who uh, have yet to have children think that just enough time with mine ought to do it for them so <laughs> <laughs> now as we move on uh you know if you, you, you have you have not one but now two children mm-hmm. now uh we, we talked about uh your bat you know the, the, we haven't really touched base on the bipolar thing and uh you and a, a part of the book uh mentions the, i called it the incident when i was re- you know, talking to somebody about the book uh, uh-huh. Now, are you okay to talk about the incident, uh, the uh, whole thing about well, the clothes burning? I mean, to, it, it, as much as you can. I don't want to like pry too much out of on that. But. No, it's it's not. It wasn't my finest moment. I can say that, but it was definitely humiliating, embarrassing. It became so public, and and there were so many negative things said. But I don't know that I would have been able to share my story and get so much amazing feedback from people had it not happened and without that incident who knows how much longer I would have gone on without uh, the bipolar diagnosis and it has changed my life so uh, I started as a really humiliating experience and has turned out to be one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me and you know you're able to you know get get back on track, and you're you're able to share these uh, stories uh, uh, stories of survival in this great book, uh, "Fall to Pieces: A Memoir of Drugs, Rock and Roll, and Mental Illness." My guest, Mary Forsberg Weiland. Now, can we talk about uh, since the release of the book? Well, what's been going on with your life now uh, since the book and everything uh, that has gone on in your life here, just in the recent, uh, not too distant fa- past here? Uh huh. Well. Kids take up a whole lot of life. I will say that. Um, now, how old are your children? Uh, eight and ten. Oh wow! Eight and ten. So they they got a busier life than I do. I feel like I work for them. But, um, but other than that, uh, I guess the the biggest thing has been has been that I've uh, started back at school. I took some time off to write the book, but I'm hopefully one day going to finish my certification in drug and alcohol counseling. Oh, good for you. Uh, sadly, it's out of field where they're uh, not going to be hiring one day. 
Um, it's I, something that is here to stay. But uh, definitely, I think with the most, the more information and education people receive, and the stigma hopefully can be somewhat removed from it at least uh people will people will get better a lot faster and that's just an awesome thing and I, I do want to is there any uh last words you want to say before i send you out i've noticed i've taken uh, so much of your time here and i'm very grateful for no, the time no, thank you so much i I'm, i hope there's uh one of your listeners that that might be able to, to hopefully benefit somehow from my story and I do recommend them checking out the, the book uh, in paperback form so it's easy to carry around wherever you go. You can put it in your back pocket. You can put it in your purse, whatever it takes. <laughs> it's called Fall to Pieces, and I cannot promote this enough. I really, truly love the book, A Memoir of Drugs, Rock and Roll, and Mental Illness. Uh, thank you so much, Mary Forsberg Weiland. Again, uh, I am really honored and touched that you uh, took some time to talk to us here at the Tuesday Night Experiment. And I wish you nothing but continued success uh, in your life, but with school and with your children, just life in general. You're definitely Thank you. same to you, and happy holidays to everyone. Happy holidays to you too. Now I better send you on your way. You got a couple kids to look after. Oh yeah, but they've been silent, shockingly. <laughs> hey, you, you definitely treasure those moments. Oh yeah. Well, thanks a lot. Have yourself a very wonderful evening and a great holiday. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you go, gang. Mary Forsberg Weilin on the Tuesday Night Experiment. Yeah. Why, dog? You were just sitting in there looking <laughs> rather intently. You were you were a good little listener. <laughs> you think? Yeah. I mean, Sugar Sean, he got a little nervous. I think he drank too much Pepsi. He had oh, to get yeah. out of there. I had to take a squirt. Yeah. What a really uh, a true story of survival, though, with with Mary. And I mean, she in this book, she's not afraid to go places and be brutally honest about. Uh, Things that some people kind of just shy away from because wow. they have personal shame or whatever it is. She's only 35, you know. You know, and she's lived a life that, uh, you know, she's probably lived three lifetimes, you know. Yeah. Just, just, you know, being, you know, the model and living through that and, uh, you know, being a rock star wife and, you know, dealing, dealing with the problems. And they dealt with problems together. It wasn't just one person having a problem. They were both, you know, living a very hard life and... I think it's a real testament to her and her survival and just the fact that she wants to go out now and help people out with this. Yeah, with that's problems. kind of cool. She uh, mentioned that she wants to finish up on her uh, chemical dependency degree. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, that's awesome. That's the people that should fit in well with the treatment programs. The people that have been down that road and have seen the infliction and the addiction and, and they've rolled around in it yeah. and, they've, and they've realized the difficulty it is to clean themselves up and you know because a lot of people could say you know well i'm going to go do this today i can quit anytime i want whether it's 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 drugs or it's alcohol even down to your basic cigarettes even things like that i mean addiction is tough it, and, you know and if people who decide to do it it's not just going to be i hey i quit it's over if you, you really if you're really serious about it you're going to have a lot of bad days how about the coffee addicts out there? Oh, caffeine is, yeah. is a very terrible thing, too. I mean, if you get, if, if that's your, you, you, it's whatever it is you become a little too reliant on, you know, you're, it's not going to be an easy road to quit anything. And I think that it's wonderful to have people out there like that who are willing to share the story. And there's a lot of people that can find inspiration and comfort in her, in her writings and, and what she's going to do uh, now from this point on. Now it's in paperback. Yeah, in paperback. I read the book. I I got to say it was a. I was. I so read it over the weekend. So are you getting autographed, signed copies of these books? <laughs> there, you go. there you go. We had that somebody lighten the load over here. <laughs> <laughs> get all serious or we get funny. <laughs> no, no, I I don't have any autographs, but I I definitely uh, enjoy that the fact that the people at Simon and Schuster and uh, uh, this yeah Harper Harper Collins Publishers have sent me stuff, and uh, you know what. I'm not one of those people who just, you know, these stations or whatever that I book a talent and then if they have something to push, I'll just mention like, you know, the cliff notes on something. Wow. I actually go in there and if it's a movie I have to watch, if it's a CD I have to listen to, a book I have to read, I I take a genuine interest in that stuff because I don't want to come off as someone who just wants a freebie. And I don't want to have the interview sound like uh, someone who just doesn't give a damn and just says, no, yep, nope, yep, uh uh-huh, that's tough. No, I think it's true. Yeah. Yeah. You know, anybody could do that. Any little morning zoo crew can do all that stuff and take you completely out of the the realm of what you should be doing. It's listening. It's educating. It's enlightening yourself. 
That's right. You know what? And we got another interview coming up this coming hour here in the in the uh, Tuesday night experiment. I'm getting so serious around the holidays. It's a very special <laughs> yeah, edition yeah, of the no show. <laughs> oh, guys, how about we play a song, recharge our batteries, and then get back at what we do best? Pick it on Slauson. No, oh, just okay. kidding. <laughs> Smackdown time. Don't worry. Second hour, we're going to have a DVD review for him. Let's play some Mighty Buddy Boston to take us to words and see the news. It's Tuesday Night Experiment. Thanks for listening, and a big thank you once again to Mary Forsberg Weiland. Ninety point one FM, Radio Northland ORG as we enter into our second hour on this TV. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? Hey, hey. And you know what that means. Frankie or Sugar Sean. It's the here. movie guy. <laughs> it's the Sean movie some... guy, Sugar Sean Slauson with the movie review, but that's coming up as we get to the bottom of the hour. We're gonna save oh, you for the last segment. Oh, wow. You got bumped? Yeah, we're actually saving him for the last segment. Really? The half hour is gonna be pretty much up to the sugar man. Oh, wow. Listen to the sugar Free man. Free form like, sugar that's style. How, that's how it was last week, I tell you. Oh. Well, yes, I'm Glenn Brockett, along with my uh, co-host, my partners in crime, my deuce, my aces. Uh, we're talking Blind Dog, baby. How you doing, yo, friend? Yo, yo. Blind Dog is like, he was just still, I had to snap him out of it. He was, I, I never, again, I had never seen you so into an interview. I... I don't know, man. Maybe I know that chick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's scary. Mary Forsberg Weiland, our uh, first hour guest. Uh, very cool. I, I definitely uh, recommend buying that book. Uh, Sugar Sean's lost in a man who uh, saw a book once. Yeah, I, I, I did see a book. I read a book. And I don't remember the book. <laughs> what was it, Charlotte's is Web? It, is it the Time Life series? Actually, the, <laughs> one of the books that I, I remember that I did read at one time was the Home Alone movie book. Uh, yeah. you, uh, oh, <laughs> man. Just so I can get a Culkin reference in there. <laughs> I love it. I love if it. If Jackson were alive, he'd just call him up. <laughs> Say, what's up, buddy? How yeah, about Macaulay? What's up, Sugar Sean? <laughs> I love this. <laughs> now, we talked about Scott Weiland, or his, we talked with his ex-wife. We got some news about his former group, Velvet Revolver. Oh, they disbanded? No, no. I'll tell you a little bit about this. I, I'm glad that you asked me that great question. Your skills at segueing are wonderful. <laughs> I have, you, have you done this before? I, uh, yeah. Uh, once or twice. I talk every now and then. I'm a talker. <laughs> <laughs> ever since Scott Weiland left Velvet Revolver, fans have been wondering whether the supergroup would ever find a new singer and release new music. Drummer Matt Sorum tells ABC News Radio that the process of finding a new frontman is underway even now. Well, hasn't it been going on for since Scott left the group? Well, they must have just took a break. We had, we had a coffee break, and then we forgot about it. <laughs> Slash made a solo album. Okay, here's what Sorum had to say. We tried out three guys last week, and we're going to bring one guy back next month after Christmas. He adds that the singer coming back is a known singer, but won't reveal the name. So that should be interesting. Hold on for a second, guys. I think we may have a phone call. Oh, just take it live on the air. Yeah. yeah. Okay, on, okay right? so anyway. <laughs> yeah, so how's it going there? There's got blind dog. <laughs> uh, well, we got Glenny Man and the phone over there. These guys are overcast yeah, right now. So. You know what, guys? How about we uh, put our guests on the phone here? Thanks for stalling, by the way. Yeah, our second guest geez. of the night uh, helped uh, co-author a great book on the life of professional wrestler Dustin Rhodes. It's called Crossroads. And I'm going to welcome him right now. Turn down the music. A big welcome to author Mark Vansel to the Tuesday Night Experiment. Good evening, sir. Hi, how are you? Oh, doing very well. Thanks so much for uh, agreeing to come on the program and talk about this book. I had a chance to read it on uh, Saturday. It was a book that I was able to complete in a day because it was just such a great story. Uh, Dustin Rhodes, uh, a guy who uh, def definitely didn't travel uh, the straight and narrow, but he definitely had an interesting life nonetheless. <laughs> well, I think you put it, that, that's a bit of an understatement, right? <laughs> um, no, he was great. I mean, he was... Uh... He's had an extremely colorful life, to say the very least, um, with a lot of uh, bumps in the road, mm -hmm. most of which he created. But, you know, he was at a place, it, it was fun to do this with him because he was at a place in his life that, uh, you know, he wanted to just lay it all out. And he did. I mean, all of it. The dar and, and the darkness, the lightness, and everything in between. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you get involved uh, with, with Dustin Rhodes on this project? I, I have, uh, I've done a... Uh, a number of projects with Simon and Schuster, the publisher in New York, and um, I had also done the uh, the unscripted book with okay. the WWE. 
Kentucky. Those guys are way back, uh, gosh, five, six, seven years ago. And um, and they, I think they called Simon & Schuster and asked uh, asked for me, and one thing worked out. It just the timing worked out perfect, and, and I was just curious. I, I actually was down in Tampa, Florida. I went to school down there for a couple of years after high school, and um, – and that was right at the time when uh, you know Dusty Rhodes was, you know, was the king king of everything down in that part of the country. Mm-hmm. With the Eddie Graham, so the Eddie Graham promotion run. Exactly. Yeah, and I remember, you know, I grew up 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 in uh, Northern Illinois, and you know, like everyone else, watched wrestling. And I had worked uh, when I got down to Florida. I got a job at the Clearwater Sun, which was a little uh, daily newspaper in Clearwater, Florida. And I remember the first Friday night where the guy brought by the, you know, in those days pre, pre-email or Internet, and a, a guy would come over from Tampa and actually hand us the uh, the results for that night. Oh, wow. And, and it, I remember just thinking, you know, you always knew it wasn't. That was back when it it still wasn't uh, fake, you mm-hmm. know, or it wasn't. When, when kayfabe, w- kayfabe was more prevalent back then. It was very prevalent, and, you know, it was the first time I'd ever seen the other side of it it was just even though i was 18 or 19 years old it was still striking oh and just the, the amazing talents that were down in that promotion uh, too and uh, another one that always comes to mind when i think of florida the florida championship wrestling was the voice of florida championship wrestling gordon Soley. oh yeah 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 it was a, it was a cool time i mean it, this was this would have been like 77 78 and i remember i, I mean i i'd go into bars here and there and see dusty Rhodes. You know, it's just it was odd seeing because he just had such a distinctive look, and and he was he was a great guy. I mean, he, you know, he, I always remember they never people would come up to him and he 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 always treated him with respect and he, he was a cool guy. So, you know, it was fascinating when this came along. And if it, if it wasn't Dust, Dustin Rhodes, I don't know that I would have been so interested. But I was just curious to see how it all worked out and where he came from and how it related with his father's experience, and it was cool. It was a fun time. You know, and, and Dustin, uh, too, you know, already had the big shadow of being the son of a legend, and you go into his early upbringing. You know, the life of a wrestler wasn't one that uh, you would, you know, be able to see your kids all the time because back in those days it was, you know, it was every, you know, six months sometimes you'd be on the way to another territory and, you know, trying to make some money and try to make a name for yourself. It wasn't as locked in. You didn't have your, you know, WWF, you know, with McMahon, Vince McMahon, the '80s basically made it a cross-country thing. But back in those days, it was more of a regional-based sort of thing. Yeah, and, and you're right. His father, you know, I mean, one of the, I mean, it was traumatic for Dustin as a, as a young boy. He had a, um, you know, he, here he is growing up, and at some point recognizes that his father is something other than the regular father. But he's never home, and when he comes home, he's beaten up. You know, he's been driving in cars for two or three months, uh, working the territory. He's tired. He's sore. And, you know, a good guy who loved his son and all that. But just, you know, his life was his life was on the road and growing. And, you know, and, and Dustin was just a little boy who got sort of lost back in the shadow of it all. Mm-hmm. And uh, early on, too, uh, you know, Dusty and his wife, Dustin's mom and dad divorced, too. And uh, Dustin didn't really have a really good go when it came to living with his mom, uh, especially with, you know, the the men that she would bring home. It wasn't exactly an idyllic life for him uh, in regards to that. You no, know, it was very dark, as a matter of fact. Um, you know, she had some very troubled relationships, um, and they all seemed to have, you know, violence as part of, as a common denominator. And, you know, here's a woman who worked two and three jobs, and to support her kids and kept her kids from any of the, the really bad stuff that these guys inflicted on her. And, you know, for a little boy who's, yeah, I mean, just, you know, I don't know if you have kids, but I do. And you, you think, my God, what this kid saw and he, he even says it. And he said he cried and cried and cried for months and months and months to just get away and to, and to be with his dad. And, you know, eventually that happened, but mm-hmm. it, it, it's, uh, I think it's a scar that, that never went away. And I actually think some of the demons that came along later in his life, you know, uh, go back to that time. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, you know, Dustin was able to uh, move in with his dad. But at that point, Dusty had remarried and, and kind of started a, another family of his own, too, uh, one of which, uh, you know, his little brother Cody came into the world. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it was. 
you know, here he finally gets the, I think he was a sophomore in high school and or sophomore, a junior, and was a promising football player in Texas, which, as you know, is a big deal. Oh, absolutely. And, um, and they go, he goes to North Carolina and to live with his father. And here it is, you know, he has this ideal all these years. He's built up this ideal in his mind of, it's going to be like TV, you know, mm-hmm. be a little boy being with his dad. And, you know, by that point, Dusty's become Dusty Rhodes. I mean, he's bigger than life and he's on both sides of the business. And it's this kind of the same stuff. You know, he's not around a lot and Dustin's growing up in this strange place. And, you know, as it turned out, was a, was a really good football player. And, um, but it, it just didn't match his perception of, you know, reality didn't match what his hopes were, I should say. Mm-hmm. And Dustin actually had uh, offers, uh, you know, to go on the, to college and, and play play football and stuff, too. So, I mean, he definitely could have, yeah, there was a potential there to uh, to you know, do the college football thing, but he ended up eventually getting into Daddy's line of business. Yeah. he. Uh, in fact, Howard Schnellenberger, uh, you know, around that, he had been huge in Miami, and then he, he was at Louisville at the time, and that's where... Dustin was going to go. He had football scholarship was all ready to go and just bailed on the whole idea and flew down to uh, either flew down or drove down. I can't remember the, uh, in, in the book, but he went down to Texas and his father realized, you know, this kid, this kid's got the hunger and on a long ride from the airport told him all about the business, laid it out black and white. This is what happens. Here's how it works. Here's what you have to do. And, and Dusty, you know, brought him into the business, but he gave him, he gave him nothing in terms of, he gave him help and he mm-hmm. connected him to the right people, but there, you know, Dustin had to earn it and he did it and he did it the old fashioned way. Oh, exactly. Dusty didn't give him a, a free ride and a free, you know, and, and push him to the moon before he was ready. He made him work and, and it was making $20 paydays in, in, in Texas, right. Florida, or in Memphis. It was an, it was an education that Dusty himself had to go down and earn too. I mean, he wasn't inst- instantly the American dream. Dusty worked really hard to get to the place he was in his career, and he definitely set aside those values and that work ethic uh, when it came to dealing with his son. He, I think he really wanted him to, to do it the right way. Well, you're right, and there was another political side to that as well. I mean, by that point, Dusty, you know, was, again, still on you know, both sides of the business, mm-hmm. and, you know, he understood what would happen. You know, he couldn't, he couldn't afford... You know, for Dustin, uh, say to give him a free pass because everyone's going to was expecting would be expecting it, and it was going to be hard enough on, on on anyone being the son of Dusty Rhodes as it was, and he had to make sure the kid really really wanted to do it because it was not going to be an easy road, and you know it was it's pretty neat. I mean, really, when you read when you read through what Dustin was willing to do, and the passion. I mean, just incredible passion he had for you know for wrestling and what he did it, it's a pretty cool story i mean just, i don't know that that i don't know that that still happens or can still happen today like it did then but i mean he did it the old-fashioned way that's for sure and dustin gives a lot of credit to uh being able to work with a lot of uh, really great in-ring workers early on in his career I mean, he's worked with, you know, in the WWF, uh, he, at the time he worked with Ted DiBiase. He worked in the NWA for a while, you know, with he, had, he teamed up with Kendall Windham, worked with Barry Windham, Ricky Steamboat, Arn Anderson. Now, that's a great education to get in the ring from these guys were, were top in their game as far as in-ring work. Yeah, they were great workers, and, the in, and they were the old school guys, right? I mean, they were just like his dad. They respected the business, and there was a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. And those guys, you know, that was a great benefit to him and probably accrued to him because of who his father was. But those guys, you know, Ricky Steamboat, you know, Arne Anderson, the wind of those guys took him under his wing, under their wing and showed him the right way to execute in the business. And, and to Dustin's credit, um, you know, he, he's really never, even, even in his darkest hours, he really never lost that, that part of the passion for the business. No, he, he, you know, even like in these darker years when he mentioned it, 
he still did some decent work. And, uh, you know, that's just a testament to what he learned along the way. And, you know, he was with his dad for a while. They went into the WWF for a while uh, with the whole black and the polka dot debacle with, with Dusty, but he was able to get over. Uh, they ended up getting back to the NWA. And that, after a while, that's sort of where kind of the, the trouble started in the relationship, uh, especially came around the time when Dustin started to become involved with who was going to be his soon-to-be wife and mother of his daughter, Terry. Yeah, it was it was a very strange thing, you know. It, it even even now looking back, I mean, we talked a lot about it, but I never could. Maybe it was just the nuance of the business and the fact that his dad was, you know, on the management side at the time, and Dustin was on the other side. But but for two guys that were pretty cr- pretty close, it was odd to me that that Dustin felt so insecure and, and felt it necessary to keep this relationship away from his father. Maybe it was. Again, maybe it was political because you know everybody was in the business, and that's mm-hmm. a little it can, can put a little pressure on things. But you know that, and if you remember, I mean, what blew, what really blew it up was really a pretty innocent thing. You know, I, I think his wife got sick, and he was supposed to play golf with his dad, and and you know, Dusty looked at it as as uh, Dustin was choosing her over him, and it, it just blew up into a really a horrible mess for years. Yeah, it took five years to them to kind of mend the fence. And, you know, it was really sad, too, as, uh, you know, Dustin became a father for, the, you know, with, you know, with Terry and him. They had Dakota, and that, that that didn't really help, too, when you're feuding with your dad and you kind of want to share more moments, you know, especially now that he's become a father himself. Right, right. And, you know, and around that time, so you ha- you have this, you know, and now again, go back to his childhood, right? He, he's had, he has this incredible idea which a lot of little boys do about their father but this incredible ideal of a of, of a you know vision of who his father is and what he means to him and here they are you know separated I mean they I mean it, it had to be like a divorce you know in every sense of the word and at the same time he's he's he has a few injuries he's starting to take some pain pills and it, it just turned into a, a really horrible, slippery slope that, that uh, it's remarkable the guy's still alive based on what he's gone through. In the midst of all of this, the character that was created that really, like, just jump-started him into, the, uh, into another just dimension in the WWE was uh, the creation of the character Goldust. Now, this was a character at the time. They were still kind of, you know, they weren't quite in the attitude phase here at all. And this was one of those things that, you know, along with the Stone Colds and all of that, this was another one of these precursor taboo sort of things that helped kind of kickstart uh, what was become the attitude era for the WWE, I think. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, too. And, um, you know, it's interesting. I wonder, and I asked Dustin this, and he wasn't quite sure, but... You know, based on all the time we spent together talking about his father and talking about the business, I'm not sure if they had been on really good terms if if Dustin would have went down the road with uh, Gold Dust or not. Um, I just can't see Dusty liking the character, especially, the, you know, all of the nuance that Dustin brought to it, which was almost all of which was fantastic. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he, he, he took an idea that, you know, was... was Part of it came out of uh, Vince's head and blew it up to a degree that I don't think anyone saw coming. Mm-hmm. You know, and the success of Goldust, but then, you know, that's when things even more were starting to spiral with him. With, with like you said, we mentioned before, the substance abuse really started to come into play. And with the substance abuse, uh, it became other problems that helped kind of put him in a downward spiral, you know, the, the drug abuse and then eventually leading to the separation and eventual divorce from Terry, too. A lot of these things uh, really created a lot of limbo years for Dustin, and it, it was a hard time for him, too, especially when he was just, little, you know, still kind of in the feud with his dad and that eventually ended up, you know, correcting itself. But it was a lot of rough years for him, especially, you know, when 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 the drugs started to come into play. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was drugs. It was alcohol. It was... Uh, you know, there probably was depression, you know, of one form or another involved as well. And he, he, you know, eventually, as it would with anybody, he couldn't hold it together. Um, you know, his whole life was coming apart at the seams. I mean, at the in the at the end, um, after he'd finally, you know, resolved things with his father, which I really think was the beginning of of the light coming back on for him. Oh, definitely. 
you know, he was living, I mean, he was basically living in a, in a, you know, in a, in a garage and was broke and drinking, you know, morning to night when he wasn't doing drugs. And, and the drugs weren't, it wasn't, you know, the drugs were painkillers, you know, mm-hmm. with stuff, stuff like that, you know, that he had sort of rationalized in his mind. They were okay because I, you know, I got oh, a prescription from a doctor. Um, although he was getting prescriptions from many doctors. So, you know, he was, he was at a, he was at a, he was in a, he was in a very, very dangerous place. Um, and then, you know, like a spark of lightning, he, you know, got himself together and got in rehab and, and came out of it a, in, in many ways, a completely different man. Mm-hmm. Well, definitely, you can tell that uh, once he started shaking off the the, the the drugs and stuff, that he was really uh, he, he really paid so close attention to his career. He talks in the book how he wasn't much into the the working out thing. He became more of a workout fanatic. He was losing weight. He was just getting himself in just excellent shape. He really, I guess, this whole new lease on life thing really started kicking in for him. Yeah, it did, and I and I think there were a lot of things with that. I mean, one of them was again the relationship with his father was repaired, and, and probably what's interesting about it, it probably now matches, you know, what he hoped it was when he was a little kid, um, and I think that had a profound effect on his ability to, you know, stay clean, and and walk this the straight and narrow. And then he he uh, he also is in a very solid and, and uh, you know, loving relationship now uh, with a with a wonderful woman, and you know he re it's like he it's like a rekindled his entire life because he he found again even I think in in even better way to some degree his love for for the for wrestling and and his love for the nuance of it. I mean, every tiny aspect of it. And you know, he realized what he'd been through, and he was in a new situation where he could actually help. Some of these kids, you know, of which he had been one at one time. And one of those kids now is his brother, who's become slowly becoming a real rising star. He's he's definitely got the the Rhodes gift of charisma, Cody. He does. Yeah, yeah. He he's uh, yeah. It's it's kind of cool. You know, the, the thing that's interesting is they didn't really become close until they were older, because because Dustin was just so much older when mm-hmm. uh, when Cody was born. I think, and I can't remember the exact. I mean, I think he was. 16, 17 years old when Cody was born. So, you know, there's there's quite an age disparity, but they'd be, they've really become, you know, great friends. And I think Dustin, you know, for Cody is a great guy to have because, you know, there's nothing Dustin has, has experienced or seen that Cody's not going to, you know, run into somewhere along the way. And, and I think it's, I think it's working out really well for both of them. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of cool uh, to see, uh, you know, Dusty with his sons uh, doing uh, little backstage bits on WWE television. It's mm-hmm. definitely sort of a full circle sort of thing for the for Dustin. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I, you know, I, I hope nothing for the, but the best for him because, you know, when you, when you do projects like when you do these kinds of books, I mean, we probably spent, gosh, I would guess 40 or 50 hours, you know, in two to three hour blocks. Well, probably more than that. Um, going through going through his life, and it's a very strange thing because most of us, in the in the normal course of our lives, never have to think back and turn. You know, and and you're constantly kind of digging up these old things, and, it, and it's you know, it's in a very emotional and very intense process. And you know, he came at it just the way he he goes to work. I mean, he came at it in a very fearless way and let it all hang out. And it was, you know, it was, it was a wrenching process for him and me often. And it's an excellent book. Uh, I do recommend people check it out. Crossroads, uh, story of gold dust, Dustin Rhodes. And I have to ask you before you go, is there any uh, uh, new projects that you're working on as we uh, head into 2011? Um, well, I'm, I'm working on a book with, uh, Mark Bonacani, uh, Ooh. Nick Bonacani's son. Mark was, um, if you recall, was was paralyzed 20 years ago, 25 years ago, in a in a football game at the Citadel, and um, and Nick and the whole family's is, they're behind the project, and um, you know what they've done since that, what Nick has done, what the family's done, they've raised you know I think it's 350 million dollars and built the world's greatest uh, 
spinal cord facility down there in Miami. So it's a cool, it, it's an interesting project. He's got a he's got, he's got a tale to tell as well. Yeah, you definitely uh, when that that book becomes available, I would definitely love for you to have come back on the show and talk about the, that book as well. Yeah, and Mark, Mark too. He's 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 a remarkable human being. I think he's the longest living quadriplegic at this point, and um, I, I don't know very many people that have a better outlook on life than he does. That's just an amazing story. Uh, is there any last words before we uh, send you on your way tonight? No, just uh, I would urge anybody that's a wrestling fan to, to go out and get the book. I mean, Dustin poured his heart and soul into it. And, you know, a lot of these kinds of books, guys can be very guarded and try to, you know, rewrite history a little bit. And to Dustin's credit, I mean, it's all there. I want to thank you, uh, sir. Mark Bansell, author of a great book called Crossroads uh, about Dustin Rhodes. Thank you so much for coming on the program, and I look forward to talking to you somewhere on down the line. Great. Thanks for having me. Take care. Well, there you go, gang. The, a second part of our big interview, uh, Double Dip tonight, uh, the story of Dustin Rhodes. Go- yeah. Gold uh, dust. Now, uh, now, Sugar <laughs> Sean over here. Now, I saw him in, in I Glee. I was paying attention, yes. Uh, <laughs> I remember uh, Dustin Rhodes back in his WCW days as the uh, na- natural. Na- the natural, yeah. yeah. I loved his theme song, I tell you. That was <laughs> oh, we got to find that WCW, the music CD from the early 90s. Yeah. I think they got a Steiner Brothers song on there that uh, oh, really? Blind Dog and I can bump to. <laughs> Stunner Rise, I oh, think was the geez. name of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe they can have the Freebird song, Bad yeah. Street USA. There you there. go. <laughs> we're gonna play. We're gonna do a quick song, guys, and then we're getting into the long-awaited Sugar oh, Sean geez. DVD review. Much ballyhooed, I hear. Uh, so let's get, <laughs> let's play an oldie but a goodie from the Pixies. It's called Wave of Mutilation, and that's coming your way right after we do a couple of words. We gotta get the words in. It's all about the words. Oh yeah, you know. Have that. you heard the word? <laughs> the bird is the word. No more. No oh, more. Geez. We'll be right back. Sassy. Today's episode, Bobcat in the Cave. Oh, nuts. There's a bobcat in this cave. Save us, Sassy. You will, but first you'd like to stress the importance of cat adoption? Over 5 million cats go into animal shelters every year and they need to be adopted? Help us, Sassy. Why bother? We'll just get into more trouble tomorrow? Sassy is brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. Remember, adopt. Programming is support. Mike. They just want to mess with you, pal. How about we get to our favorite segment of the show, the one we waited last for this week. Uh-huh. We're talking about Shooka Sean Slauson's DVD report. And as you listen to last week's program, I may have been a bit harsh on the boy because he forgot to do one thing that I asked him to do, which was watch the movie Inception. He broke my heart. You broke my heart, Sugar I'm so Sean. Sorry, <laughs> like many girls that you've broken hearts. Yeah, you broke this man's heart. The list is so long. You know? Now, now, first of all, before we get in, did you watch it? Yes, I did. Did you watch? Okay, <laughs> that's good. Now let's get into this DVD review. We need to get some music. We, we I got to produce something, man. This is <laughs> this is yeah, dry. Yeah, I have some wacky wacky tunes or something. You know? Wacky wacky tunes. Yeah, like the themes of Animaniacs or something. I don't know. Anim- I, I, anything would be fine. <laughs> oh hey, is that for the YouTube album? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is me flipping you off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you said you didn't like? Is that the- censored? No, you can actually you can say what you want. You oh, don't we can't s- do it because we're on the air there, yeah, Fulio yeah, Iglesias. Yeah, you don't want to swear or nothing. But, you know, All right, it's time now for Sugar Sean's <laughs> DVD review. Well, yes, I, I actually I actually did see the uh, movie. I actually watched it on Saturday. Yeah, there you go. I can actually hear myself. Now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem, bro. Uh, yes, I saw it on Saturday afternoon. I cooked myself up a little pizza and whatnot. And, uh, for a couple hours Do we need to the, hear the backstory on this? Oh, jeez, hey, come it's, on. It's been like two weeks of waiting, so you're going to I smoked a Cuban cigar. It was yeah, great. Yeah, I smoked some grass <laughs> or whatever. No, uh, you don't be want to be uh, nah, talking about Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, what no, no, be no, saying no, that no. I mowed some All the neighborhood kids will be knocking at your door. <laughs> anyway, so I watched it on, on Saturday, and uh, actually, you know, I was going to, you know, remember I was telling you yesterday when I was chatting with you on the line about yep, we a had big a surprise chat. or whatever? Yeah, the big surprise. Well, I didn't see a box here. I didn't see any. I don't see a girl coming out of no, a cake. Yeah, I don't see no. any of this. <laughs> well, the biggest surprise that I can say is not only did I actually go and see oh, it. Oh, get out of here. I actually went and bought a copy. Get out of here. Yeah. Look at it. Touch it. Yeah, you want to feel it? Yeah, Wait. <laughs> what? He's okay, feeling the now. case there, ladies and gentlemen. This is on Blu-ray. Blu-ray, yeah, Blu-ray D- too. It's actually a Blu-ray DVD uh, combo pack, so you can actually watch it on DVD 
or Blu-ray or digital copy if you have. Shook a shot. Yeah. You got some game, brother. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I figure, you know, you guys. 30 bucks. No, actually, it was uh, 20. It was on sale. Well, why don't you just say you paid full price because you're the man? Well, see. Yeah. The, the Smooth thing, talking pimp. The, thing the about ladies got to know that you got bling bling. Yeah, well. Look his well, ash. You know now I'm broke because of the bling bling. But anyway. All right. <laughs> that, let's get into this. What did you think of the movie? Well, I actually, I actually really, really enjoyed it. And I did have to pay attention to every little detail. Did you fall asleep during it? No, actually, uh-huh. you know, it, it started out pretty intense right away. So I want to read out my entire what I wrote because I, I got some good words about it. You know, I want to make it sound really good. You know, my review. So here we go. This movie almost felt like it was the Matrix meets the new Batman films, and the reason why is because of the thinking that you have to do. There are some scenes in this film that trip, that pretty much tripped me out, uh-huh. like, like the scene where the train comes crashing through the traffic. Oh, and that insane! Hey? Oh, that was very insane. I wasn't expecting that. That's just uh, it just happened, you know. Or when the rookie dreamer girl, as I call her, turns the town into almost like a box or upside down, more or less, and that was pretty trippy. I thought. Mm-hmm. The music also was like a Batman type feel, and I always say well, you that know, Christopher because Nolan of Christopher directing, Nolan, yeah. yes. Because he, he directed it, so you know, uh, let's see where are we? Um, it was almost like a Batman like feel. Mm-hmm. So all in all, I give this film four out of five stars. Well, there only, you go. only because of how confusing the film was and how you really had to pay attention to detail. You know, have you watched Memento yet? I, I actually seen that a long time ago. I, yeah, it, he, it's been a while, but did it, it make you want to kind of want to revisit that just because of the way Nolan tells his stories and well, the complex? Well, 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 the that was just like you know, it started. The ending was the beginning, and the beginning was the ending, or whatever, or something like that, or you know, it was confusing. It was, you know. But you were you allowed yourself to go along for the ride. That's the best part. That's like the most rewarding. I can thing. see why you want me to watch a movie like this because it, it actually, you know, it made me think of Memento a little bit because of how confusing and how. But it wasn't. I mean, as confusing as it may have been, there was a lot of good parts too. A lot of good uh, acting between the characters, and mm-hmm. and then the scene at the very end. Well, I don't want to give too much away. Oh, no, yeah, no, no, you have the spoiler. spoiler. Yeah, like la- like 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 last week. Remember last week's spoiler? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, you gave away Mr. Mom or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. grown ups. I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, Scotty here was kind of pissed. But anyway. Well, yeah, you just ruined his whole night. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I had to go home and watch Fox News, and it wasn't the same. Uh, yeah, that Kip Hines and his big weather show just didn't yeah. have the same oomph, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but, the, uh, but the Blu-ray you know, itself has has a lot of good features on it. It actually comes in two. Well, I know why you bought this, man. It's PG-13, so I know you no one want to be watching R-rated movies. Well, I have a Blu-ray collection of my... I do have a Blu-ray player, so I kind of... He has uh, it in a room with beads in it. He opens up the drawer, there's beads there. That's a special collection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, all in all, it was a very good film, and uh, you, you know it's definitely worth uh, adding to your collection. I mean, I didn't think at first, you know, when I bought it, I didn't think I was gonna like it at first. I thought, okay, this could be, you know, maybe it's just gonna be something I just really hated. But you know, if you follow the Batman films that Christopher Nolan made, there's a few characters, there's a few people that actually are in this film that were in some of the Batman, the, ah, the two Batman films. You lost films. me about five minutes ago. Oh, well. Uh, you know what? This now, kid, you actually had me there. But now, Blind Dog, you got a question. Now, I don't know if it's just because I think laser discs are still cool. <laughs> but what's this whole digital copy mumbo jumbo about? That's, uh, if you, well, if you open it inside or whatever the case, there's a, a code in there that they give people that buy the Blu-ray or the DVD. So you can make your own copy of this. And well, use what it, down it the is road? is like if you have like an MP3 or not MP3 player, like an iPod, or even on your computer, you can like it's almost like add it, burn a copy of it on your computer digitally. You know, then you can oh. watch it at your at your house. You know, as many times as you want. Them's the future. But there, there's this thing for people who aren't used to digital copy. They give you an expiration date on how long you can uh, you know keep that you, digital copy. Well, no, no, no. Once you does keep it the, disintegrate. No, the, the copy <laughs> itself... Is it self-destruct? The copy itself lasts forever, but if you don't use it in a matter of certain... You, you know, lose certain, it! If you don't use it, you know, or you know, add it to your computer or whatever, yeah, then it expires. The code's a little good, but... Uh, that kind of reminds me, use it or lose it. When I was kinda. working at Corporate Radio Land over at Cheap Channel, uh, that's, yep. uh, that's the way it was with my vacation pay. <laughs> use it or lose it, man. 
Well, I mean, that's Not just right. the thing. They give you a code, and then you have so much time to... But they give you at least a good five or six well, months. It says you so, got right? until May something, 2011. Yeah. So you got some time. Pull the trigger on that, but, sugar. Yeah. All, all in all, I mean, you know, I'm sure they got a soundtrack out for it, Oh, too, this will be on that. Hulu in no time. As I give it a little while. <laughs> <laughs> I give it a little while because it's still fairly new, and I don't think uh, Hulu. There's your blue disc. They'll probably have like a Blu-ray preview or something. See, this kid, he he, he brought proof. He, he not only told us that he watched it, he made a good description of the movie. Made it it must the, be a good movie if you and, go out and, and buy it. And for oh, those no. uh, watching the YouTube stream here, you see the uh, nice cover, how it has to give a 3D image kind of. Ooh, uh, for those uh, listening on radio, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it kind of sucks. So, <laughs> but, there, but you see, there's a reason why, and, and I'm, I know how I you love hate. You, G. I know how you hate <laughs> sentimental crap, but but I'm going to be a little sentimental right now because there's a reason why I did buy it, not just to see it, but here's I figured, a tissue, you jack wagon. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just it, it just all goes since this is our last show for the year. It all goes kind of what we were talking about mm-hmm. way a long time ago on the music jury. Uh, how, what was that show? It sounds like some fly-by yeah. night operation with a but bunch of jokers. It, it just was third rate jabronis. It just was with me, you know. And you, you know, you and I, we've had our, we've had our, we've had our good history, we've had our bad history, but yeah, you know, we, we've all lived. in all, I'm uh, appreciative of the fact that you invite me into your show. You know, I know it's not just your show; it's our show. But you know, the fact that you thought about oh, me. Oh, come and, on, you know. sappy Susan! <laughs> I want to get up and dance with you right now. Well, it, yeah, you know, geez. that's. And Should I wanna, we just turn the lights down low in here, or what, man? <laughs> make some candles. <laughs> Jeez, get some candles freaky. going. So, you know, it, <laughs> the janitor it's all about, will be walking by. What the world's going on long in there? Story he pokes short, his head and goes, Debbie Gibson? <laughs> long story short, or short story long, it's uh, just all about that respect factor. And that's, well, uh, yeah, that's why no, I did what I did. Dude, so. I totally appreciate that. And I so think that's a, that's a pretty stand up move. Yeah, well, I, you know, and I'm getting sappy too. It's not kissing any butt, it's just showing <laughs> respect. You know, that's, that's what I think. Oh, okay, well, let's get up and dance. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but oh well. I've been wrong before. But. Oh, I'm just waiting for the Prozac to kick in, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah, just because you need more pills, don't you, there, the blind guy? Right? I don't even know where I found this song. I just, <laughs> <laughs> it magically showed up. Uh, we actually also, I think you were going to let me do like a top. Absolutely, brother. Do it. Do it. Santa Claus, okay. right? Yeah, Santa Claus. That'd be number one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's going to be in the theater here in town. Yep. Santa Claus? Yeah. We're putting it on. Oh, yeah, yeah. A G&G production. I want to go and see that new Fockers movie. Uh, oh, yeah. No. Double the, Dose the, of the Fockers. The little ones? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I kind of like De Niro. I think that guy is badass. Oh, yeah. You know? They've done a pretty good thing that, with uh, that franchise. That Ben Stiller, I don't know. That guy jury's really still <laughs> out on that, huh? I, that jury's still out on that. He has a double that. dose of Fokker. I like his dad, though. <laughs> his dad's pretty funny. I did like the fact he directed The Cable Guy. I don't know. There's a soft spot in my heart for that yeah. movie. Yeah, a lot of people still don't know that, you know, which is kind of sad. You figure people would know that. Cliff Clavin Slauson over here, yeah, he knows geez. about that. Heck, I knew that Trivia the day mania. I got, before I even got the DVD back. Dance, mailman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, buddy, let's get back into your uh, DVD review. So because of the fact that I did the Inception review and whatnot, it was very successful, we were going to do... Yeah, you kicked butt on that, bud. Sugar Sean's top six favorite Christmas films. Why top six, Sugar Sean? I thought it was Sassy Pants. There, we there, throw there's that a one. Lot Sassy more. Pants 7. There's a lot more, but, you know, if, if I said every Christmas film that I liked, we'd be here till like, midnight. So, you know, there's a lot. Uh, but I picked six just to keep it on the down. Is that one Rolfy one on there? Actually, no. No, oh, but come on! It's a good film, but it's not my Which favorite. number are we now? Number six! Well, well at number six... Oh, that's nice. Number six, we're going to say The Polar Express. How is that a Christmas movie? It's a Christmas movie. Have you ever seen it? Was that? it released around Christmas? It kind of was around Thanksgiving. Oh, man. No, yeah, Come on now. Me. Okay, all right. Number well, nine. <laughs> Actually, number, number five. There you go. Pay attention there, Blind. What, which number are we on? We're on number five here. Learn how to count. Top top six. Jack Wagon. Six, six, six. Sugar Sean. Holiday movies. Number five. Is I'll Be Home for Christmas. Who's in this one? Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Ah! <laughs> but it's a good film. It's, it's Where do they story. find these guys straight out of acting school? Yeah, I, I think uh, Slauson <laughs> still has his pictures of JTT from Sassy Magazine uh, or Tiger yeah. Beat on his wall. It was a good film. I liked it. It, it okay. also featured a young Jessica Biel. 
Uh. Well, there you go. I like the story. The acting was good, you know. But oh, are you kidding me? Though? You're on, killing me with another that one. adventure home to uh, home for the holiday film. Oh, they never tried that one before. No, Which never. number are we at? N- n- number four. Number four. four. Well, we go from one home improvement reference to another. The Santa Claus. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Is that Tim Allen? Yeah, this yeah. is the original. I didn't care for part two or part three because part two and part three it just, were all going back to the first one. I think that Tim three. Allen really needs to relapse and get back on the cocaine. Yeah, he just, needs, he just needs something. He doesn't even have a sitcom deal. Yeah, Mr. Home Improvement. He, he's, hey, I he's have sitting all, on those residuals. How about improve your acting skills, you yeah, jack eight, wagon? I have all eight seasons <laughs> of Home Improvement on DVD. You know, at the time that they came out. Uh, That's time you was, can never get back, you know. That's Isn't that the me. TV show where they started replacing their own kids with like different actors? Uh, no. Okay. No, I, yeah, I think that, I think that one's a different one. Yeah. Oh, you're way off, man. You gotta watch. You gotta go back Ooh, to the retro. You gotta go back to Sean retro. Smack hey, come on. You know what time does that come on in the morning on CBS Sit- at like three thirty a.m.? Go to sitcomsonline.com oh. and you will find all types of sitcoms. On guess, I, blah, I guess I found. Blah. Guess I found out how you somebody came for the Christmas present. You better go back and watch present. that short circuit one, man. I have it on DVD. <laughs> Sur- short Circuit 1 and 2, I have it already. Wasn't there a sitcom about that, too? There probably was, but I don't you know. It, I know Glenn, he remembers that one where that little chick or that small girl. Wonder, yeah. Yeah, yeah, small yeah, Wonder, yeah. Yeah, Small Wonder, that's yeah, what it okay. was. Okay. All right, Sugar Whatever. Sean. Yeah, hey, get there back to the count. There was also a uh, sitcom uh, based on Uncle Buck, but nobody cares yeah, about that. Yeah, that was Kevin one. Meany, and it didn't yeah, last. Yeah, it did last two episodes. Then. <laughs> yeah, Kevin anyway, Meany. Okay. I still like WKRP. Come on now. That's a great show. Uh, yeah. Number three here number on the list. Three. Number three. Number three. Should go all the way. <laughs> now, is that the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yes. That's and, the and, one. and the uh, comedic stylings of Sinbad? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, you can't forget about uh, who's that other Sinbad's guy. Sinbad's playing my holiday show in the basement of my folk's house. That's oh, 30 wow. bucks I could spend. <laughs> <laughs> Does that include a dinner? <laughs> no. It yeah, was, bring your own lunch. <laughs> Sitting in the garage with a dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's a potluck. <laughs> it was a very good film. I mean, I you know, and it was all pretty much shot here. In, well, not shot here, but shot you know, in Minneapolis. At the, at the Falls Mall. <laughs> <laughs> the mall, malls of America, you know. But I, I liked it. I, I thought it was really good. <laughs> now, do you remember what the story was about? Because, I mean, you're just giving me a list. You're rambling, tambling over well, here. Well, the story was pretty much about... Uh, more relationship with you know Arnold Schwarzenegger wanted to have a re- good relationship with his son, and and it was a uh, pretty much a cross wire between him and getting that doll. I am Minnesota near that, that was the main premise. For- <laughs> okay, I think somebody drank the cough syrup here. <laughs> Sugar, Sean, what Jeez, are you doing? Man, I was about ready to sneeze all over. You're lucky. So you need some eggnog or mucus? No, or yeah, well, well, eggnog it's is all mucus, mucus yeah. man. It's starting to slowly drip back. In eggnog the is kind of mucus, but anyway. Okay. Call you number two. Number two. Number two. Home Alone 1. The original. Oh, the first one. First, you'd start yakking about the book, <laughs> and now it's the movie. It's a g- it's The Pulitzer Prize winning book. It's a <laughs> classic. I mean, you're trying to double whammy with it's nightmares been out, right now. It's been out on Blu ray, it's been out on DVD, there's a soundtrack. I mean, there's everything. I mean, Sugar Sean does not have uh, on his list, you know, It's a Wonderful Life, wow. White Christmas. And uh, if it's been on cable TV, it's crap. It's They're all overplayed. I mean, I love that hey, stuff. It's been on USA, it's crap. But it's been all overplayed. I mean, the, it's, Christmas Story is great, but it's. You know, every year. What about the ref? Hours? Dennis Leary, the ref. That's a great oh, Christmas yeah, movie. Yeah, that, that was uh, uh, a Kevin Spacey. What about Bad person. Santa? Come on now. <laughs> oh, what about yeah. Badder Santa? The underrated yeah. version. <laughs> Come on there. Okay, the number one favorite number one. Christmas film of all time. Oh, number one. <laughs> number one. Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Jeez. <laughs> oh, How can those two movies dominate the top of the... Your because, countdown. Because I have class and I think of good films. Jeez. Yeah. I have awesome. class. Who's not picking up that stuff? Me. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, the director, sh- the producer, the oh, actor. Yeah, geez, the- a one-man show. <laughs> well, here's the deal. Here's the deal on this. Uh, we're going to recap his uh, six. Well, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to tell you what I my recap, the Glenn recap of this, because I'm on the show over here, Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what? You, you got two movies that were uh, starring Home Improvement alumni. Uh-huh. That was your first mistake. <laughs> I mean, it's either one or the other. Yeah, full circle. Right yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> uh, you didn't have the Christmas story. There's no Ralphie. 
Yeah, he'll that, shoot your eye out. Yep. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> and your number two, your number, you had Home Improvement 2, or Home, home Alone 2, yeah. at number one, and the first Home Alone at number two. <laughs> If this is the most cockeyed thing I've ever uh, followed along, I mean, hey, that's, I, a, that's a corrupt countdown. You, you told me I could do it the way I wanted to. Well, I know. You just, <laughs> you, you've taken what you've, re, you've redeemed yourself. Tell this kid to freestyle and look what you get. I know. <laughs> tell him, hey, we're going to ha- give you the wheel here, sugar. And this is what you do to us. You totally throw us under the bus here with your. Oh, I love it. It's, it's funny. It, 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 it's funny because you know I see big aspect, uh, aspects here in 2011 with us doing the show and all that, and there's going to be more craziness along the way. Yeah, we're going to put the octagon in here finally and get we you some ultimate fighting. It could, it, could, it could fit in our studio here. I think. I think we should. I, arm, I think we should bring back I think arm I think wrestling. The studio is big enough for this. I think so. There's we enough get, room got, in here. You know, in 2011, we got to do something to get my old name back. You know, we got we yeah. to do something. That, I still think Sugar I, Sean or yeah, Sassy, Sassy Pants Dan. is really those some good names. Yeah, I but, think you, you have not done near enough to make these names work. Because I'm the F, F man, you know. Which You're the egg it, man. Where F they man. are the egg I'm man. I'm the F man. I'm the, you know. You are not Jeez. the F man. This is something that you know what a kid <laughs> when they're little they grow up and they have a blanket when they're a little kid. Blanket. And you know they hold on to this blanket. And they just don't want to let go of this blanket. You know, everywhere they go, we got, hey, I, I can't go. I want my blanket. Yeah, and they take it away and they throw a fit. You know, there's that one day I when. I drool on it. I want it. Exactly. Yeah. There, comes, there comes a point in time where the kid's got to grow up. He's got to go to school. He's got to, you know, if he wants to get bullied for the rest of his life, you know, he's got to get rid of that blanket. Yeah. Be a man and go for a comforter. Exactly. It's time for- <laughs> wow. I think that's a good idea, that's but right. you got to get rid of that. This is the year that it's Sugar Sean fleece. Sugar Sean gets rid of the blanket and forgets about that F word, and he starts doing things. He starts taking chances. He starts getting a hold of his life, grabbing the bull by the horns, yep. and starts doing things that normally – we're going to shift your paradigm, buddy. Start You're attending try meetings. <laughs> Meetings. Be a part of oh, something. Oh, oh okay. that, that, That's yeah, after. Yeah, that's yeah, 2012. Yeah. Is, that, is that rehab? Or <laughs> Radio rehab? Or? No, no, no. Rehab no. is for quitters. Oh, that's right. Now, listen here. We're going right. to make this work for you. This is the year yeah, that right. Sugar Sean takes chances. We're gonna gamble. You're gonna gamble on yourself. That doesn't mean going out and doing the most stupid th- things. Only in, in the radio here. So, yeah, yeah. You got. You're the monkey. You're the pig. And. Year of the gonna, sassy pants. <laughs> year of the sassy pants coming oh, up. Boy. We're gonna we're gonna have you. We, we want. I really want you to go out there and go to events. I want you to be our on the. I want you to do, bring back the man on the street, the brand on the street reports. I mean, I want to take it beyond your YouTube stuff. Sure. I want you to get to some recording equipment. I want you to go to to big events around the area when you get some time. You know, if you don't have to work. I want you to go places. I want you to ask questions. I want you to get actually in there and feel the pulse of what this area is thinking. I want you to be that guy. He could guy. be our stunt boy. He is going to be our stunt boy. Wow, wow. We're going to send you to the city council meetings and go up there and ask questions that do not even pertain to the city. You are going to take a yeah. chance. We're going to take you to a Goodridge city council meeting and ask questions about Grigla. <laughs> We're going to do this for you. Does Greenbush count as a council meeting? Yes, before? it does. If they got they got a building, they got coffee, they yeah. got people complaining, that's yeah, a meeting. That Where, do they, that, yeah. Where is that held in the lobby of the post Actually, office? That's held at the community center. Oh, right? you <laughs> And it goes beyond just meetings. We yeah, want you to go to yeah. sporting events. We want yeah. you to go to like some big events coming around the area. We want you out there with the microphone with a little. We're gonna have to put, build a, a little thing that says. You know, Tuesday night experiment on it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I think we got to do this. We got to get you a, a suit, co- a blazer, an old <laughs> blazer, an old used blazer with the patches. And we're going to put a little, little, little label on there. It says Tuesday night experiment. Sugar, like- Sean, not. <laughs> Sassy pants. Or it looks like Vince McMahon out there. You know? Yeah, we're gonna no. <laughs> we want you to be our guy on the street. We're going to give you a list of questions. If you go off script. You're going to get a beating in the octagon. Oh, wow. Well, we want you to do stuff. We want you to really branch out. I think that you've, you've only uh, begun to, to evolve as a person, and we want to be those people that help you evolve. Sure. This well. is your 2011. This isn't no New Year's resolution, yeah. man. This is the real deal, O'Neill. We <laughs> want to do it for you. We want you to, to branch out. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm all for that. I and guess. we're going to lay this gauntlet down. <laughs> do you agree in 2011 – to, to uh, actually open up your horizons and, and, and accept the terms that we're going to make you our on-the-street guy. 
We're going to make you get involved with things. We're going to get you to turn you into the social butterfly that you were meant to be. It's time to start busting out of the cocoon, brother. It's time for Sugar Sean to fully embrace his Sugar Sean sassy pantsness. We could have him messing with college kids in the commons area. I think so. We'll have have hot-button questions. Yeah. We will have you a list of questions. You can't break script on those questions. Sure. Because I think you could do this. You've got the right amount of personality. You're very sociable. I think you could do it. I think. I what, think he can pull it off. I think he can. I think we have a stunt boy. I think we do, and I think that this is something that's going to make you, man. You know, it's kind of funny. Off subject here. Last week, everybody was all ripping on me because of the Inception review, but now it's like you redeemed yourself. The, the band yourself? is back together. <laughs> We're going all NWO. You watch the movie, then you buy the movie. That's yeah. that, that's Moxie. Well, yeah. I tell you what, you know, I'm all for chances, and I'm all for you know finally mixing it up and finally showing people the the real me, you know, not just a goofy whatever guy, you know, here on the radio, but you know, the guy that who I present myself as on YouTube, but also you know the real me outside of the job, you know, the pretty real much. Me, 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 I think uh, I think just. <laughs> You know, you, you've been talking about this for a while, too, you know, off, off air, too. Yeah, I mean, and and this, I, this is know, something, you know, aside from us, you know, with our usual joking banter, yeah. this is something I've been telling you for, for quite some time. Yep. I, I'm really in support of this, and I think you can do it. Well, I mean, we, we can make it happen. You you tell you me what you want, do and we'll do it. I mean, it's, uh, it's all gold. I'm in town now. I don't live in... The good old Greenbush anymore. You, so can, that's, a, that's the first uh, step right there. That's the first big step right there. Got out of the parents' life. place, so got out of got on my own now. It's so. time for you to become the man you, you should be at your age. You, man, you're, I probably should have been a long time ago, probably. <laughs> so we got the agreement. The gauntlet has been laid down. Yeah. Oh, yes. my God. I thought that was a suit coming in here to yeah. yank Take, us off the air. Oh, boy. <laughs> CEO or FCC guy or whatever. No. Usually the program director comes in. No. Oh. And I think I think <laughs> you never is, been down that road before. It's fun. Nope. I, I think no, this guy's a radio outlaw. <laughs> oh man. This guy in the past. If you ever he heard is, my show back in the day, man, I tell you. We gotta get you a hard hat. <laughs> but like but even even stuff. even the even the fact that, you know, in the past the show kind of went overboard. But there were some good times too. There wasn't just all overboard. What the heck is this guy gonna do overboard. this week, you know? There what was, there was a lot about? of. We're gonna mold you, you know, man, I, into, I, into being the radio sensation that you should be, Palio. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I'm all, I'm all You'll for have groupies it. Groupies left to the right, and absolutely big pimping. Yeah. I just, I just hope that good things come from this, and that that I think so. I, I think will, they will. I think they will. Things will evolve, and people will recognize what we're doing. 2011's and coming up. We're taking two weeks off when we get back on January. Uh, I do believe the 11th. We got two big guests. One of which I'll tell you now. I'm working on getting Mike Ness from Social Distortion. Yeah. The front end, yeah. What, me and the G know about the Social D. Social D. One of, one of my favorite groups growing up in the 90s. Ball and chain. Absolutely. I was wrong. Bring yeah. a fire. Oh, bad luck. All those. Oh, qu- good stuff, man. That's, uh, That's real Social man rock. Social D in the house. We're going to both be getting giddier. I think we'll both be asking questions on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, when we do these fancy interviews, man, we got to have those people cut liners. I think so, too. Yeah, like when yeah. we used to back in the day. Like, hi, you're shows. listening to the Tuesday yeah. Night Experiment. It's like stem cell research meets radio. Yeah, <laughs> <something> like that. <laughs> and I, I can remember, too, you know, like even back in my old days of the show and whatnot, I used to have every guest, just about every guest that I interviewed, do a liner for me. Well, there we go. We got things to look forward to. <laughs> Some are the, uh, people that don't do liners. I know a few. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Or, uh, that one guy, he's dead now. Uh, or the one that they have uh, to they pay you, or they or you have to pay them in order for them to do no. Liner. They just don't want their crap plastered all over every station. Uh, mm-hmm. That one comedian, he was like that. Uh, Oh, man, what is his name now? Seven Dirty Words guy. Oh, George, George Carlin. Carlin? Yeah, he didn't want to do personal liners because yeah. every station would slice and dice it, you know. And, and then, yeah. Yeah. But we're going to – we'll make that a part of the, the deal here in 2011. Guys, Stuck boy. In, in two there's, weeks. There's the suit again. In two weeks, <laughs> this boy becomes a man. Guys, I want you to have a wonderful holiday. That's oh, why yeah. I gave you the two weeks off. Two weeks <laughs> Merry here. Merry Christmas. Next, yeah. next two weeks, we're going to do a best of uh, – with uh, some of the interviews and stuff. And we'll Where's that music. Cheech and Chong you're promising? I can't find the... Oh, hold oh, on. Hey, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. the phone, Martha. <laughs> hold the phone, Stallone. Let me see what we got here. <laughs> I'm trying to wow, find it. Wow, that's funny. 
Hey, Vato, I found it. Hey. hey. Santa Claus with the guy with the hair on his jaws. How about we, uh, we'll, we'll do it legally.